almost anybody can put a tomato plant in the ground, you know what I mean, and water it. It's knowing when to do that. And then how much maybe fertilizer to put on and when to do that and what to do when the pests and bugs come around. And the problem with all of those things is not them. It's not the pests and the bugs and the weeds. and That's not the problem. The main problem is when those things happen and maybe you lose a few tomato plants or all of them, people decide they're not good at growing food. They decide they don't have a green thumb. And I say hogwash to that. Nobody has green thumbs. They just have thumbs. Everybody has thumbs and it's time to put them in the dirt and not make decisions about yourself, whether or not you can or cannot do something based on one or two experiences with growing a certain crop, right? We're encouraging people just to take care of each other. Just get to know your neighbor and ask them, do you need anything? Can we help you? You know, is there something that you want to offer the community? You know, do you have a teenager that needs a job, right? Things like that. When we do that, we, we're going to triumph over all of this fear and division and whatever this is that people think maybe the government is doing intentionally or not. I don't, whatever, it doesn't to me, matter to me why they're doing all that. It matters to me what we're going to do about it. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, Hilda here. What would it look like if we worked together with our neighbors to foster food independence, build stronger communities, and improve our health? This is episode 376, and our guest today is Zen Honeycutt. Zen is the founding executive director of Moms Across America, a group that raises awareness about GMOs and toxins in the food supply. Zen is also the force behind a new idea that can help us join hands with our neighbors to grow food for our families and those around us, ensuring food access for all, which is especially important in times like these. Today, Zen explains the idea behind her pilot program, the Neighborhood Food Network, and how she and Moms Across America hope it will empower people to get growing their own food. She talks about the support that will be offered to newbie gardeners, including resources for when to plant, what to plant, and dynamic conversations to support the efforts. She is also honest about her own gardening challenges and what she has faced trying to implement this strategy in her own neighborhood. Plus, She expounds on the benefits of growing your own food beyond having access to healthy, real food. This is the second podcast in our Resilient series this summer. Before we dive into the conversation, I want to invite you to a special day at Sally Fallon-Morell's beautiful farm on September 11th. She and Joel Salatin, yes, the famous farmer and author, will be speaking about the basics, nourishing traditional diets, and the importance of local regenerative farming. The day includes their talks, a farm walk, and a delicious nutrient-dense lunch, all for only $75. Again, the date is Sunday, September 11th, and it goes from 9 to 5 in Brandywine, Maryland at P.A. Bowen Farmstead, Sally's Farm. Go to our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the Events tab for more information and to sign up. I'll be there, and I'm bringing some friends who are new to this wise way of life. So do the same. Join me and bring some friends along. Unfortunately, there isn't room for children or pets at this event, but it is well worth attending and getting a babysitter for. So sign up today at westonaprice.org slash events. And Bubble and Bee. Bubble and Bee has more than 150 different products to choose from, many of which are USDA certified organic, and that's a high standard. They offer so many products, including organic insect repellent, organic body butters, and palm-free soaps. They've got facial cleansers, lip balms, and more. And Bubble and Bee offers the world's largest line of USDA certified organic deodorants for all skin types, including Pit Putty and Pit Perfect. I love those names. They've got natural salt scrubs and shampoos with none of the bad stuff. Our family really enjoys these products. And if you have a question about anything that they offer, you can email the owner of Bubble and Bee directly. It's customer service that can't be beat. So go to Bubble and Bee now at bubbleandbee.com and use the code WISE for 15% off your purchases. Again, that's bubbleandbee.com and the code WISE. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Tradition. Welcome 
Welcome to Wise Tradition, Zen. Oh, thank you so much, Hilda. And thank you so much to your audience. This is fun. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm excited to talk about growing food. And I know you moved to a place where you now have some land. And you were telling me that you've started a three sisters garden. What does that even mean? It's actually a Native American, a indigenous people to the United States tradition and perhaps South America as well. I'm not sure. But what they do is they plant on mounds and they plant corn, three or four of um, the same type of corn. And then they plant squash around the corn so that it prevents like little raccoon feet. Because you know how squash is prickly? And so raccoons don't like to walk on it. So then it prevents them from getting to the corn. And it also is a great ground cover. So it prevents weeds. And then after the corn has grown up for a little bit, maybe, I don't know, six inches or something like that, then they plant the beans and the pole runner beans climb up the corn and they use that as a natural trellis. So it's three sisters working in harmony, right, to grow food together. And the beans put nitrogen in the soil, which corn is a nitrogen hungry crop. And so they all work together to grow in harmony. And it's a really beautiful tradition from Native Americans. Well, this is a beautiful starting point for our conversation because you have a new emphasis with this neighborhood food network of having people work together in harmony to grow our own food. Now, I know you've been in the Moms Across America group, the head of it for a while, and you all have been focused on removing toxins like glyphosate from our food. Why this shift to growing our own food? Well, that's a great question. Yes, we have for 10 years now, Moms Across America, we call ourselves a national coalition of unstoppable moms, right? But we really are for mothers and others. We provide actions and solutions to create healthy communities. But our focus has really been to transform the food industry and health in America and beyond. And while that is still important and we have a whole testing program initiative that we invite people to donate to to test the current food system, we have basically lost our patience with waiting for them to do something about, you know, the government to do something about the food industry. And we're seeing that it's important to do something else as well, to be independent from the current food system. So I think it is good to take our health and our food into our own hands. But talk to us for a second about the problems with the food supply. I've heard rumors that there are going to be issues down the line. Talk to us about that. Well, there's multiple issues. Of course, access to food is one of the largest concerns going on today. Simply because of climate change, no matter what you think it's caused by, it is happening. And farmers, especially in the Midwest where it's drier or flooding or having problems growing food, of course, there's growing populations that are migrating. So those areas where they're migrating to, right, will need to have more food. In most cases, they don't. Food prices are increasing. Scientists and farmers were correct in predicting that they would increase up to 30% by some food types this year, and they did. And they're predicting three to 400% in the next three to four years. I don't think my income is going to be increasing three to 400%. So for me, it just makes sense to start growing some food, you know, even if it's berry bushes or green vegetables or potted tomatoes or like anything will supplement the food that's coming into our household, which we need a lot of. We have three teenage boys. So to me, it's, To just get started feels good. It feels safer. It feels wise. And in addition, the current food system, I mentioned the food industry, the problem with that is it's basically not being regulated. Previous administrations, all of them, all kinds, have decided that the food manufacturers, GMO food manufacturers, genetically modified, making genetically modified organisms, can govern themselves, basically, can regulate themselves. So our current government is not looking at food safety testing for genetically modified organisms. Clearly, the EPA is failing at regulating glyphosate and thousands of toxic chemicals in our food supply. It's miserable, right? The system is broken. They have been bought out by these large corporations, and they're not doing their jobs. And we mothers just simply feel like, and many people want to take matters into their own hands and start basically a parallel food system. And this is what the Neighborhood Food Network is based on. It's people coming together to have food security on their street with their neighbors. 
So let's define that a little bit, this Neighborhood Food Network. I know it's a pilot program. What does it consist of? Well, it was inspired by Neighborhood Watch. Have you heard of that? Where you get your neighbors to, Yeah, you get your neighbors together. And if the policeman's requirement is that if you have at least one representative from 50% of the households or more, a policeman or two will come out and educate your neighbors on how to prevent crime, right? Now, we don't have a parameters if it has to be 50%. I mean, if you get one or two of your neighbors on your street to come together, we encourage you to have a meeting. You know, first of all, download our invitations, go door to door, knock on your neighbor's door, meet them, which is going to be a big step for a lot of people in the first place, just to meet your neighbors, meet your neighbors, invite them to a meeting and your front yard, backyard at the end of a cul-de-sac, you know, like block party, whatever you want and share with them what the neighborhood food network is. And we give you the outline for that first meeting. And you basically share that the goal is for everybody to come together to talk about, to, you know, strategize, organize, and mobilize to create food security. And that could mean more people growing food and sort of organizing that. Like for instance, when I lived in Mission Viejo in California, there was a woman who had a lemon tree on our street and she gave away at least three or 400 lemons. I mean, it would have made no sense at all for everybody on our street to have a lemon tree, right? (laughs) So if you just get together with your neighbors and you just sort of coordinate a little bit on who's growing what already and who might want to share or swap with other people, then you are creating a community unity on growing food. Zen, I like this already because it gets people together. It gets them getting to know each other and it's apolitical. (laughs) In other words, everybody wants to eat. And how non-threatening is that? This is a great way to get people together and to, yeah, get growing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, That's definitely one of the positives that we have on our list is that you can bridge the political divide. You're not going to care if somebody is a Democrat or Republican, if you're hungry in the future, if there is some type of crisis and they come at you with a basket full of food, you're not going to care. So it's going to bridge the political divide. But also for people who don't want to grow food, we're going to ask for people to put those people sort of in charge of accumulating a list of local small farmers CSAs and co-ops where they can buy their food from and not a long distance away and support those local small farmers. And I know the Weston A. Price Foundation has already been working on this for decades to connect people with local farmers. And that's why I'm so excited to share with your audience, because I think that the leaders and the facilitators of your network already are doing this. They just may not be doing it on their street, right? They may be doing it in a larger community. I love it so much. And I also like that you kind of, with this Neighborhood Food Network, do some hand-holding. The fact that you said, we have invitations that you can print out. I was like, oh, that's nice. But that's not where it ends. That's where it begins. Talk to us more about what you envision and what you want to provide with this Neighborhood Food Network. So we do provide the first invitation you can download, print out, and bring to your neighbors. And then we have the first meeting flyer that you can run your meeting by this with this outline. And we also have resources on our website for videos you can play, how to find out what your garden zone is, how to find out when to start growing things, planning things. We have a Monday night call for the Neighborhood Food Network at 830 Eastern time. It goes for about an hour sometimes. And we have a gardening expert on every week to talk about a particular thing, like for instance, container gardening or how to start a compost or setting up watering systems, right? And you can bring your questions and it's free. There's a lot of gardening networks out there and some of them are quite expensive. And we wanted to make sure that there was something available for people who just need a little help and they want it to be free. Now, of course, we'll feature gardening experts that you could pay hundreds or thousands of dollars to be your personal coach or to come set up the garden for you or a food forest. But we want to make sure that people can just get started and have the support to do that and then connect with people in your local community as well. And the the goal is for you really to find a local gardening expert that you can connect with so that your neighbors have support on your street. You may be that garden expert. If you love gardening, you may be the one. But you can also find a local gardening expert through your local garden stores, through the extension. A lot of people don't know about this. Most counties have an extension, which is an extension of universities that support people in farming and gardening. So the point is just to get connected with these people. 
Sam, this sounds wonderful, but I have to be honest with you. I can just picture my neighbors being like, no, thank you. What happens if I knock on all these doors and these people are like, we don't want to plant with you. We don't want to do anything with you. There's no sense of community and connection or kind of pulling together in the same direction. What would a person do in that case? So what we're counting on is that our neighbors will start to become curious, especially if you bring them some extra food or if you do have a farm stand with free food and you just start meeting neighbors on your street. And you can connect through many different ways, but through food is one of the best ways. And I have found that we gain many other resources and benefits by doing this. You know, you learn about other resources available, like a great guy who can help build fences, or I've shared a resource for unsprayed hay and straw, you know, that we use to feed our animals or to grow potatoes with. You can share resources and connect with other local mom and pop businesses by connecting with your neighbors. And it just has you feel safer, more connected, more unified. And that's what we need right now. We need hyper local compassion and creativity and unity. We need to stop looking for big government to solve all our problems because they're actually causing way more problems than we need right now. Right. We need to look each other in the eye and share our experiences and share how we can help each other and benefit each other. I think that's what we need right now in the world. Well, and the other thing we need to actually make this work is land. Do you all have suggestions on how to find land to grow this food on? Yes. Well, actually, people have can grow more food than you would think in a small amount of space. And there's a lot of the videos and resources that we will be showing, we'll be showing that. Like for instance, 20 potato plants are what needed for a family of four to get started. And you can grow quite a few of those tomatoes in like baskets or bags, you know, things like that. And if you have a strawberry tower, you can quadruple, you know, your the number of strawberries that you produce. And you can also ask neighbors and churches and schools and community areas for land. And one lady shared with us that they found a piece of basically abandoned land and they basically just started growing food on it. (laughs) They kind of just, I don't encourage (laughs) doing illegal things, but they basically just started growing food on it. And when somebody from the city eventually inquired about it, they said, well, you know, we're already growing food here. It's benefiting the community. And they said, all right, we'll just let you have the land for a dollar a year. You know, as long as you have insurance, which I think it costs maybe a hundred a year or something like that. And so there's lots of different ways to get land and you can also grow vertically. You can grow on rooftops, you can grow on walls. You can put things that hang off of walls to grow food. So there's a lot of ways and there are many people getting creative. They're growing in containers. I mean, I prefer to go in the soil, but there are people growing vegetables and things like that in with hydroponics, stacking them up inside of facilities and things like that as well. As you're talking, it's reminding me of the Victory Gardens during World War II when there were food shortages and people were trying to ration their food so that there would be more for the soldiers, let's say. People were encouraged to plant gardens. There's something beautiful that can come out of a challenging time. Like you said, whether or not a crisis is about to come, what a wonderful gift for individuals and for communities to grow their own food. Absolutely. And it's creative, it's fun, it's fulfilling. I have to tell you, when I grew my first yellow squash, I held it up like a trophy <laughs> and posted the picture on Facebook. And I was like, look, and people are like, Zen, it's a squash. And I'm like, yeah, but it's my squash. Like it felt <laughs> like a, such a triumph because you know, you are nurturing that seed. I'm going out and watering it. I like to water it myself. I know I could put a timer on and just have a things set up. Eventually, maybe I will. But I like that time. I do it in the evening and I see the fireflies come out. I have a neighbor that plays the flute. I get to see the plants growing. I get to pick the weeds and be connected with the earth. That is my balancing time and connecting time with nature. So I love that. And I want people to just start to experience the joy and the fulfillment that there is in growing your own food and just see that it'll take off from there. It'll be so fulfilling and rewarding. Coming up, Zen explains the support her network hopes to offer to those who think they have no green thumbs. She also expands on the vision of 
the Food Neighborhood Network, to simply help us get reconnected with our neighbors face-to-face. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Abundance Plus. Impending food shortages have been described as a slow-moving disaster. But this does not have to be your story. That's the emphasis of this podcast series on resilience. And Abundance Plus is another way to build that resilience and take control of the situation. You have the ability to move from shortage to abundance. At Abundance Plus, you can homestead and know that the Abundance Plus community is here to help. The team offers the inspiration to get you growing, the know-how to get you there, and the community to keep you there. Begin your homesteading journey right where you're at. Justin Rhodes and his team offer inspiration through the Netflix-style docuseries, which is so phenomenal and inspirational, I'm telling you. Vlogs that are ad-free, and exclusive contributor content from the leading experts in homesteading. There are also masterclasses, a fantastic learning library, and full courses from the leading experts in this field. So go right now to AbundancePlus.com and check it out. The Abundance Plus community also has an exclusive social media platform. You can have your own curated timeline by joining groups, and there's no need to worry about the Facebook police censoring you. You can access the member map directory that allows you to search for other members in your own town, and it includes the ability to search for specialists in your area. Find a neighbor to help you on harvest day. Keep connected through the exclusive marketplace and buy and sell your goods to other members. Abundance Plus literally has it all. Plus they are, should I say plus? Because I already said plus a lot. But yes, they are flexible and on a number of different platforms. You can access the full library from all your devices, including laptops, iOS, Android, or streaming boxes, and TVs such as Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire. So begin your homesteading journey with this community. Move from shortage to abundance. They will inspire you, get you growing. They offer the know-how to get you there, and again, the community to keep you there. Visit AbundancePlus.com to join today and use the code WISE to get 10% off your first month. That is AbundancePlus.com. You can homestead and they can help. An optimal carnivore. Organ meats are some of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. Our ancestors prized organ meats for their vital properties. An optimal carnivore has a new product called Brain Nourish, where they have combined grass-fed beef brain and lion's mane mushrooms in a groundbreaking formula. It is the ultimate whole food no tropic to build a better brain. These two ancestral superfoods have been used for centuries to improve brain function and overall mental well-being. And they are now available for the first time in convenient capsules. Studies have shown that both ingredients are remarkable at improving cognition and brain health, both in the short and long term. Guaranteed to have your brain firing on all cylinders for supreme focus, elevated mood, improved memory, greater clarity, and enhanced creativity. And there are so many benefits for your overall health, vitality, and longevity thanks to the highly nutritious superfood ingredients. Each serving has 1,500 milligrams of organic lion's mane and 1,500 milligrams of beef brain. They only use 100% real mushrooms, organic fruiting bodies, which are rigorously tested for active compounds. And the beef brain is sourced from the highest quality regenerative farms in New Zealand. The mission over at Optimal Carnivore is to make it easy for people to consume the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. And they also plant one tree for every product sold, which helps the environment. So go to amazon.com slash optimal carnivore and use the code WESTON10 to receive 10% off all products. They have a grass-fed organ complex that contains nine organs, a grass-fed liver product, and the new brain nourish product that I just told you all about. So again, go to amazon.com slash optimal carnivore and use the code Weston10 at checkout. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. And that's not to say there won't be perhaps some obstacles in the way or challenges, which is why you have this regular Zoom calls and things scheduled to help people because you mentioned early on the thing about garden zones. It's important to know what will actually grow where you live, right? In other words, some regions are more arid than others and so forth. Yes. And the garden zones is mostly about timing. And so what we are working on in this pilot program is gathering the data to have a downloadable 
event that you put in your calendar for every month for what needs to be done in that garden zone. So it could just, with a click, it can just automatically go in your Google calendar or your Outlook calendar on the first of the month. And it says, okay, this is the time when you start, for instance, start your tomatoes or peppers indoors if you want to do that, right? If you don't want to do that and you just want to buy your tomatoes and peppers starts, you know, the the three or four inch plants in say May or whenever you plant them, you can do that. You do, you do pay more. You do pay three or $4 per plant versus $3 for a whole pack of seeds. But this timing and knowing your garden zone and having a timing, we're going to be making it easier for you to know what to do when, because for me, I find that that's the biggest struggle is not really like almost anybody can put a tomato plant in the ground, you know what I mean? And water it. It's knowing when to do that. And then how much maybe fertilizer to put on and when to do that and what to do when the pests and bugs come around. And the problem with all of those things is not them. It's not the pests and the bugs and the weeds. and That's not the problem. The main problem is when those things happen and maybe you lose a few tomato plants or all of them, people decide they're not good at growing food. They decide they don't have a green thumb. And I say hogwash to that. Nobody has green thumbs. They just have thumbs. Everybody has thumbs and it's time to put them in the dirt and not make decisions about yourself, whether or not you can or cannot do something based on one or two experiences with growing a certain crop, right? Well, maybe you grow that crop in a different place. Maybe you plant it a little earlier, or maybe you only plant that in in the fall because a lot of, in the fall, you have a lot less pests and bugs and weeds. So, you know what I mean? And a lot of people don't think about growing a fall crop, planting kale and cabbage and lettuce in the ground in September. People think, oh, it's done. It's over. No, you can get a great fall slash winter, early spring crop because there's not as many pests. So there's just so much to learn about it. That's what I was going to say. It's so interesting and there's so much to learn. But I want to ask another skeptical question now, Zen. Mm -hmm. Surely some strawberries and some squash and some kale wouldn't be enough to help my family survive during some kind of food crisis or would it? Well, here's the thing. Any food that you can get, especially for free during a food crisis is going to help your family survive. And in fact, if there is a crisis, let's say for instance, a gas pipeline is hacked, which has happened in my area and gas was in a major shortage for two weeks. What if that extended out to two months? What if there was a nationwide hack on gas pipelines or power outage and grocery stores just didn't have food. I mean, for instance, I know that in Florida, when my team members was out in California with me, her husband was stuck, you know, at the house with her, with their son, when there was a major hurricane, she said that within three days, they basically had no more food in the house. I mean, they might've had some pantry items, some crackers or something, right. But they didn't have meal food in the house because the refrigerator was out, you know, everything had spoiled. And so the only place that had actual food was McDonald's, like the grocery stores, something had failed there, or they were all sold out or whatever. And she said, I am very concerned about if there was a longer power outage, what would people do? Where would they go? So the fact is, is that the only way we are going to survive in that type of crisis is if we do have access to local food. And if you start planting some sweet potatoes in the ground, you don't have to harvest those at certain times, you can just leave them in the ground. And in fact, they're a beautiful ground cover. I mean, you don't have to mow. If you've got a front lawn of sweet potatoes, you don't have to mow. Ah. And you've got free food, highly nutritious, packed with nutrients. It's a great meal and it grows well with other types of crops as well. If you check out, for instance, say TikTok, and we're going to be putting these videos on our website, the neighborhoodfoodnetwork.com as well. There's a guy in, I think it's Santa Cruz, who has a front yard. I believe he's a 64-year-old man. And in that front yard, he grows enough vegetables to have a 60-something person CSA. It might be 80 people. So he has tons of vegetables in his front yard. It's just an average size front yard. So if you think about space and utilizing that space to the maximum capacity, you could be growing sweet potatoes and kale and all kinds of vegetables in your front yard. And I promise you, once you start to grow food, you're going to have too much. You're going to need (laughs) to learn how to preserve and to dry, dehydrate or preserve or freeze that food. And you will have an abundance. I mean, there are jokes that go up on 
the Facebook pages about, you know, where people are growing foods that are, that like people are shoving zucchinis into people's cars before they leave. They're leaving boxes of zucchinis and Amazon boxes on the front porch. So somebody will steal them and take away their zucchinis. Like (laughs) once you start growing food, you will have more than you need. And that's why people share and feel so good about growing food because you end up with enough to give away. So any food that you start growing to answer your question will support your family in a time of crisis. And once you start growing food, I believe you will find that it gets you know easier and easier and more fun and more rewarding. Well, Zen, you've really inspired me and all of this sounds wonderful. Now I have to ask a practical question for you as you're organizing this Neighborhood Food Network. Where's the money coming from? Because if you're offering these resources for free, how are you going to sustain what you're doing on your end? Well, that is challenging, but we have had some wonderful supporters in the past that we hope and they've said they're going to continue to support us so we can continue running. them. We are in a shoestring budget, but we do ask it would be wonderful if people who participated donated anywhere from 3 to $10 a month. That would make a huge difference for us. We're not asking for 130 something dollars for a program up front. We're not asking for $5,000 like some of the food forest planners ask for. You know, many of these coordinators and consultants worth their money, you know, do require hundreds or thousands of dollars to get started. We're for the people that want to do it themselves. They want some support and they're willing to be able to hopefully, if they can, invest a little bit of money each month. And if you do that, I believe it's on our about page under donate. Our graphic designer, who is practically a volunteer, she is working a little bit. She does get paid a little bit for us, but has agreed to make a Neighborhood Food Network sort of calling card customized for you so that you can print that out as a little business card and you leave it with the flyer with your neighbor if they're not home so that they can respond to you, right? And email you back and say, hey, I'm really interested in this. I couldn't, I just couldn't meet this Saturday. When's the next meeting? Or I have free tomato seeds to share. Or how do I do that? Right. To start connecting with your neighbors in that way. So we're going to be supporting you. We hope that people will support us back. And we just ask for whatever type of donation you can give. I'm glad you have a graphic designer on staff, because when you mentioned Neighborhood Watch, I immediately thought of the sign I've seen with a little detective with a hat pulled down, you know, so it's very memorable. So I hope the Neighborhood Food Network has something like that down the line. So I want to ask you as we start to wrap up just a couple more questions. What benefit do you see this program offering besides access to food that we grow ourselves? Well, we touched on a few of them already, but I'm just going to elaborate. I just see that people will feel safer, more connected with their neighbors. They will have access to more resources, to neighborhood, you know, plumbers and fence builders and technical type minded people or whoever. You'll just get to know your neighbors and you will bridge that political gap divide and you will have access to things you never had before. You know, for instance, my kids had the experience of meeting our neighbors that had alpacas and having conversations with them. I mean, they're like giant stuffed animals. They're adorable, right? (laughs) So like you just get to have experiences that you never would have before. I met another neighbor who's an artist and we got to talk all about flowers and art. That's what we need right now is to be more connected, not disconnected. We need more compassion, less political divide. We need more generosity and less focus on just prepping and hoarding and being afraid of our neighbors. I mean, aren't you all tired of being afraid? Well, if you're tired of being afraid, what are you going to do about it? This program will support you to get connected with your neighbors and to create that connection that erases and eliminates fear. That's what I see. And I want a world that works. I want a world for my kids where they can go down the street and they know the neighbors and they're sharing tomatoes with them or making sure everybody's okay. And I have to say, one of the main inspirations for this was this comedian named Jade Adams. And she is on a, an Amazon series called Serious Black Jumper. And she is a heavy set woman that experienced a lot of Uh, harassment. And so her main message is compassion. And when she speaks, people listen. And one person said to her, Jade, you should run for parliament. You know, she's in the UK. And she said, no, 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 no. We don't need more leaders. We just need more people, a whole heck of a lot of people who are willing to make sure that everybody else is all right. We just need to take care of each other. 
And so when you look at this program through that lens, that's what we're doing is we're encouraging people just to take care of each other. Just get to know your neighbor and ask them, do you need anything? Can we help you? You know, is there something that you want to offer the community? You know, do you have a teenager that needs a job, right? Things like that. When we do that, we, we're going to triumph over all of this fear and division and whatever this is that people think maybe the government is doing intentionally or not. I don't, whatever, it doesn't matter to me why they're doing all that. It matters to me what we're going to do about it. Wow. Well, I love your vision. I feel like compassion, connection, love will win over fear. And thank you for setting this up. We will definitely put a link in the show description and also in the show notes and the transcription and everything to where folks can find your neighborhood food network and get on that website, get on these calls, get these resources. It sounds amazing, Zen. Now I want to ask you as we close the question I like to pose at the end, and it may be related to this topic or something else. If the listener could do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? For me, that's always to eat organic as much as possible, to grow, buy, or eat organic as much as possible, reduce your exposure to toxins, and you will find that your body has a better opportunity to heal itself, to sleep better, to think better, to heal from whatever traumas or illness or sickness that you may have. And when our bodies are able to heal itself, then we are happier, we're more responsible, we're more connected to people and less angry, less of all that other stuff that's going on in the world that we don't want. So my first and foremost choice and recommendation to people is always to eat as much organic food as possible, whether it's organically grown or biodynamic or whatever that is. Just if you can know your farmer and know how they grow it and go for the food that does not contain GMOs and toxic chemicals as much as possible. Well, thank you, Zen. Again, thank you for your vision, your heart, and where this is all headed. We are so thankful to be partners with you, really, in this effort to help people grow healthy, organic food. Thanks again. Thank you so much. And to all of your listeners, I appreciate you so much. Our guest today was Zen Honeycutt. Visit her websites, momsacrossamerica.org and neighborhoodfoodnetwork.com. And I'm Hilda Labrador. Find out where I am, what I'm up to, and the services I offer at holistichilda.com. And for the transcript for this episode, visit our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the podcast page. And now for a recent review from Apple Podcasts. Shanae Trudeau says, thank you. I'm learning so much listening to Wise Traditions. I really appreciate all the guests you've chosen to interview, especially the series on mental health. Muchas gracias. You are so welcome, Shanae. And if you would like to rate and review the show, please do so. Go to Apple Podcasts and click on the ratings and review settings. And then just give us as many stars as you like so people might be intrigued about the show and listen as well. And thank you for listening. Stay well, my friend. And remember that all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit WestonAPrice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.